our uh, washes have dried so now we'll put on a second layer and uh, we'll do exactly the same thing we did before we'll load our brush and put a well down a, a puddle down and just add our second layer of color. And if you see a little bit of lake at the bottom, a little wetness, too much wetness, just dry off your brush and pick it up. Cadmium yellow light. I always stir this pigment a little bit every time I do this, especially if it's been sitting for a while. brush and finish the painting. Now we'll go to the Scarlet Lake. Clean the brush. Last but not least, stir up the ultramarine. And lay it down. Alright, now to me it looks like I have to put more layers on the Scarlet Lake, on the permanent rose, and on the uh, ultramarine blue. So at this point, you can see that the colors are pretty close to fully saturated. I don't think you need to do any more than this uh, or to get your saturation any darker than this. Uh, it took several layers of using the same uh, concentration of paint that uh, I started out with. And uh, you just build the color and build the color, uh, letting it dry between each layer. And I, I think that you'll find that as you add more layers, it's going to be easier to control that flat wash than in the very beginning when you're working with a thin, a thin coat and first putting paint on the page. Uh, this is all that you have to do uh, for this first week's assignment. You don't have to fill anything else in on this page. You're going to do that as time goes by. Yeah. Now, the, you do have to do another sheet of colors uh, to cover the rest of the colors that you have in your kit. And all you have to do is take this off of the block and then draw another set of, um, of columns and add the colors that you're going to um, uh, you and, and put in the colors that you haven't done yet. So that includes sap green, it includes Prussian blue, it includes burnt sienna, it includes uh, Windsor violet, and it includes uh, neutral tint. You'll label them the same way um, that you have here, and uh, instead of having blue with a violet bias, you'll have blue with a green bias, and then you will just have uh, a chart that says green, You'll have a chart that says neutral tint, and then you will have a um, you'll have a chart that says uh, browns. So that's about it. What you should do is for the second week is make sure that you have um, gotten these finished and uh, scanned them, or else photographed them and sent them to me, so that when we have our second session, I will be able to. Uh, discuss them with you. Okay? The other thing I want to say is about these pigment, these wells of color that you have. Uh, don't throw them away. They are going to dry out. And once they dry out, let me see if I have another example here. 
you'll see that once a, p a pigment dries out, it leaves a little ring around the um, where the color ends, right? If you take your eyedropper or your ear syringe, which is what I like to use, and you just put enough water into that puddle so that the water comes up to the edge of the um, of the dry area and you mix it, you will get exactly the same concentration that you had when you first mixed it. So that's a little trick that's nice to know. And uh, that's what will happen with these because by the time you get back to next week's assignment and you have to do uh, the graded washes, these are all going to be dry. Now all you have to do in order to get them to be the same concentration that they were before is to just add water up to the color line level uh, that I showed you in the example uh, before. And then you'll have exactly the same thing that you had when you did the flat washes. Next week we're going to talk about creating a color wheel. So make sure that you have a compass in your uh, art material supplies and uh, you'll be all ready and set to go.